So Natasha, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? Yeah, thank you so much. I'm well. I'm very excited to do this with you today. And thanks so much for the invite. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello, everyone. And I wanted to introduce Natasha because some of you, um, some of you may not know Natasha. Natasha is a dear friend. She's also a uh, certified uh, Ayurveda and yoga instructor, uh, teacher. And um, I find her to be so knowledgeable on, um, and it's not just her knowledge, actually, I would say, it's more the way that she can take concepts that can be quite complicated in Ayurveda, and she can break it down in ways that become much more easily understandable to the people like myself, who, um, uh, or even people who have no concept of Ayurveda. I've been, um, you know, reading Ayurveda for some time now and looking at the research. Um, however, it was through Natasha that I, I started to really gain an understanding of what it was I was reading about on like a deeper level. So Natasha, thank you for that. It's been so um, helpful for me to have these conversations with you. It's actually been equally as helpful for me because, you know, with my Ayurveda lens on and getting a chance to chat with you and you're like, you know what, actually, this makes a lot of sense because, you know, I've done this research and this research also like aligns with what you're saying. And it's just this, we have this sort of mind blowing little chats that we get to have geek out on, which is really fun. Yeah, that is super, super fun. I agree. I really enjoy it. Um, so why don't we um, just do like a quick little blurb on what Ayurveda is, um, just so people understand like what it what is Ayurveda medicine just very briefly, and then we'll talk about our topic today, which is what how Ayurveda views menopause menopause is a big thing. Um, for women who are either anticipating a menopause and they're worried about it or they're going through perimenopause. And they're having a really hard time with the suffering of certain things like some women can like breeze through menopause and other women just suffer a lot through it. Um, and then sometimes you're on the other side of perimenopause, you're in menopause. Um, and that's when by definition, after you've had no period for a year, that's like the definition of menopause. So the perimenopause phase can take like months to years to go through and that's the crazy fluctuations in hormones so your body can feel really discombobulated with a lot of experiences physical and mental experiences and then you have menopause uh, which is a year after having no periods and i wanted to really get the ayurveda perspective on especially that phase of the suffering you know when you have those um, experience of symptoms like hot flashes um, irritability, mood swings, uh, hormonal fluctuations, uh, menstrual fluctuations, and all of those things. So why don't you start with a little Ayurveda explanation? Yeah, thank you. Um, and one of the things that is important about this topic today is that it, Ayurveda is a lot about um, prevention, you know, and it's a lot about understanding what's going on now and how can you align yourself so that you can go through this process with ease. So it's not only there to help us, you know, when we're already in the thick of it, it's actually to help so many people who are about to transition into it as well. And so if you do know anyone that you think might be interested in this topic, get them to come watch this later because we're going to have a lot of really great information for folks who are not there yet also. Oh, totally. I, I so agree with that. So Ayurveda is an ancient like wisdom that we were gifted about 5,000 years ago. And it was through, um, um, it was through sort of a deep sort of contemplative meditation and through observation over the years and through study Um, wisdom that we've been with really been gifted and to to take it to the very like sort of fundamentals and then open it up Ayurveda you just kind of have to like put your Ayurveda glasses on it really talks about the five elements and how they're um, how they're really available no matter where you look so the elements are earth water, fire, air, and ether. And if you think about it, 
even the smallest thing that we know of, an atom or a molecule, has these sort of elements in them. They have structure, the earth element. They have energy, vibration, the air element, the fire element. There's mobility there. And so if we can really think with uh, the elemental uh, fundamentals in mind, we can kind of look at everything in our life through the qualities of these elements. So if we take the earth element as an example, the earth element would have the qualities of heavy and cool and dense and sort of thick, you know? And so what sort of um, foods and habits and lifestyles would we have with that heavy, dense, thick sort of element? We'd have heavy foods or um, like, root vegetables, stews, uh, oatmeal, right? Our habits might be more sedentary, being able to sit and work for long periods of time, maybe working with our hands. Um, our, our sort of like, you know, thought processes might be like a little bit more down or depressed or on the other side, like really grounded and loving and nurturing, you know? And the imbalances with the earth element would go towards those heavy, dense imbalances like weight gain, lymphatic congestion, you know, um, any sort of, sort of mucus, uh, uh, cancer, those kinds of things would be aligned with the earth element. So when we can start to look at everything with the qualities of the elements, even, um, even the, the seasons, you know, we're, we're going into the earth element season with the heavy, dense winter snow, you know, it's cooler, you know, you kind of want to stay in and hibernate. And so when we start to look at it, we can see like, oh, okay, where are we seeing these qualities in our life? And are we doing this in excess? And if we are, we can get out of it with a sort of, um, like equals like and opposites help balance. So we talked about the earth element. I'm gonna talk about two more just so we can really get it in um, as we move through and really understand how we can use this to navigate this time of our life. So we have that fire element, the hot, sharp, spreading sort of element of fire. And um, that can show up as like passion and frustration, you know, want to control and, and our want to like achieve goals, you know. And we actually have a fire time of life, which is what a lot of us are in right now. It's that adulthood time of life is our is our time to like get things done and, you know, get our job, get our education, get more education, get another job, you know, have our family, grab our house, all of the things. And so we're achieving We're you know, we're we've got that sort of fire element. Uh, elevated at this time of life. Um, some foods, you know, are spicy, pungent, salty, um, sour types foods are going to elevate that fire element. So our tomatoes, alcohol, like those beautiful, like ginger, pepper, cayenne, you know, spices, um, those kinds of things will be increasing the fire element. And um, imbalances like inflammation on the skin, acne, um, anything with like a real itis uh, in the title, right? That's gonna that's gonna have an inflammation, that excess fire. And moving all the way up, well, you know, I'm just kind of skipping a couple, but moving up to like the air element, what sort of qualities does the air element have? Well, it's light, it's dry, it's mobile. You know, can you start thinking of uh, maybe even personality types or imbalances that might have that light, airy, dry, mobile, someone who likes to travel, creative, moving around all over the place, maybe a little bit forgetful, a little on the anxiety and um, the, the foods are going to be dry, crunchy rough, you know, your, your salads, your, your popcorn, um, rice cakes, all of your crunchy, crunchy stuff, um, cold drinks, you know, and um, adding those kinds of things to your life is going to increase the air element. So, you know, if you're traveling around and have an erratic schedule and you like to have an iced coffee in the afternoon, you're going to elevate that air element in the body. And you might tend towards dry skin or constipation or anxiety and, you know, moving along the lines as we go through our stages of life, coming into that time of of menopause, you know, you would see more, um, more intense sort of imbalances like, you know, sleeplessness and osteoporosis and those types of things as well.
And so we want to like kind of catch it, you know, like what's going on with us right now? What qualities does it have? And are we doing that in excess? Are we noticing the imbalances associated with the quality? And how can we sort of like get back into balance? So now that you have a, a, a bit of an understanding of the, the elements, we can see them in the environment as well. So as women, we are so connected to life's and nature's cycles. So we have a daily cycle. We have a, you know, a, a fire, earth, and, and air time of day, like the time of day where you're just getting stuff done, the time of day when you're sleeping, the time of day when you're creative, you know, and we have this in our seasons, you know, our hot season, our dry season, our wet and thick and dense season. We have our lunar cycles that we are really um, close to, especially as women. And if you hadn't have a chance to take the wild wisdom, you, uh, you will notice um, if you do sign up for this, which I hope you do, is that you really learn how we can uh, align ourselves with these lunar cycles and how much they really affect our mind and body. And then um, lastly, we have these life cycles. So that earth element is that time of childhood when we're a little bit more chubby and like full of mucus and all of the things and we're growing, you know, and then the fire um, comes into our adulthood when we're accomplishing things. And then the air towards the end when things are starting to get dry and, um, you know, things are a little bit, um, you know, depreciating a little bit more, you know, at that time of life so um i just wanted to recap a little bit because you just gave so much like i don't know if people realize like how much amazing information you just gave there because sometimes we forget that um it can take us like years to accumulate a certain amount of knowledge but when, when someone knowledgeable explains something to us we can condense that time into minutes and that's like called a quantum leap in our understanding and what i want to also add is that taking even a bigger step back is that each individual, um, we, what we strive for is balance in all things within the body. And so when Natasha speaking about these elements, we, it's not that you want any element to go down to zero. It's that you want to have all of the elements in the body present and, and properly balanced for your unique um, you know, genetic and consti uh, constitutional uh, disposition. So you, everyone is born with a certain constitution. Um, and Ayurveda speaks about these like, um, you know, three dominant constitutions or like a mix of these three dominant constitutions. And um, I always like to kind of like, you know, some people are born kind of like a little bit heavier, thicker, denser, like a bear. Some people are more like um, light and willowy and wispy, like wispy, kind of like a, a hummingbird or, you know, and some people are like um, a little bit more compact, muscly, um, like a cheetah. And so you'll have this range of like, you know, your, your own kind of health expression, but when, and when you have certain things that you do according to your lifestyle, like what you eat, what you drink, how you sleep, how you deal with stress and your thoughts, these things and how you relate to the environment, to all of those seasons and cycles, the daily rhythms, the monthly rhythms, the yearly rhythms, that can either keep you in balance, keep you with that right, a right amount of earth, right amount of water, right amount of fire, right amount of, of air, or it can start to create imbalances in your life and, and imbalances in your body. And you can start to, for example, if you accumulate earth, what I've heard from Natasha is you can get heavier, denser, thicker, the weight gain, even all the way through to cancer. Cancer is very heavy, dense, and thick. If you accumulate water, you're going to start to get puffy, bloated, lymphedema, you know, water, like bags underneath the eyes, like that kind of bloating feeling. And if you accumulate air, you're going to get like, you know, constant patient, dry skin, dry hair, loss of the eyebrows. Um, and um, in the later phases, even drying out of the brain, that's like dementia of Alzheimer's, drying out of the bone, that's osteoporosis. And um, so when you think about something like menopause, we all, we all will eventually experience menopause, right? That is like a given. The question is, are you going, are you setting yourself up 
to go into and through uh, and be in a menopause that is balanced with all of those elements in, in an ideal balance for your constitution, your genetic predisposition. And so Natasha is going to give us now, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, or if you wanted to go in a different direction with this, but it would be very interesting to boil into what are those kind of typical menopausal symptoms, like signs and symptoms, things that you see or feel going through a rough menopause that might be um, categorized according to these imbalances and what you can do to, to and, and I, I heard out this already, so again, I'll just reflect on that. So for example, if you have um, too much fire, like you have inflammation of the skin, like acne, dermatitis, tendonitis, plantar fasciitis, um, colitis, gastritis, uh, all of those inflammatory itises, you want to dampen the fire down and, and combat it with things that are more water, like the water element. Um, or if you have too much dense, like heaviness from the earth, you want to, um, you know, lighten that up with more of the air element. And conversely, if you have the air element, you want to ground that down with more of the earth element. Is Am I on the right track here, Natasha? Is this like a good kind of overview of what, you know, you've talked about? Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Uh, and thank you so much for this, the transition and uh, you're exactly right. And we're a lot, a lot of us are in our like pitta, um, fiery sort of time of life where I was e explaining earlier, where you're accomplishing your goals and you're getting your education and you're, um, you know, getting the job, getting the house, you know, getting the things that you need and like, go, go, go. We often have a lot of stress during this time of our life. And in Ayurveda, we're looking at that as the fire time of life and adding heat to the fire. And so what happens when you have fire and fire and fire and fire and fire and fire and fire? Well, you have to get the heat out. And so what happens is two things, either the heat starts flying out of you, you know, and you get this inflammation or what happens when you have too much hot and not enough moisture or, you know, the opposite qualities, the environment turns into a desert. So oftentimes we have these, these two things happening. We come from our fire time of life. We're adding all of this excess fire, you know, stressing the body, not resting during our menstrual cycle, not allowing ourselves to have that balance, you know, taking care of our food, our hormones, our mindset, exercising, and we just continue to compact the fire. And then when we get to the end of the fire stage of our life and move into the air stage of our life, uh, what's called a vata stage of our life, we, we go typically in, in one or two directions. We also go into the earth, but it's, it's less common, but we, we're going to have that heat and the heat has to come out and we get the hot flashes, um, the, you know, liver, like congestion, irritability, you know, sometimes some heart imbalances, not sleeping between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. and move into the air stage. So all of these things um, can start to show up right around this time, just to give us a little, little bit more like excitement in our life, right? So we're just like, whoa, the hot flashes are coming. And so the heat has to get out, you know? And then alternatively, what might happen is that desert sort of feeling happens, right? There's just been so much heat, not enough, um, you know, moisture, not enough um, nourishment. Um, and then the dryness happens, right? When the dryness happens, we have that vaginal dryness. We we have weight loss, we have constipation, and then we have like more anxiousness, forgetfulness, those kinds of things. And then that can turn into like a more anxious mind, um, moving towards osteoporosis, that bone loss, and not sleeping between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. Oh, that's a big one for people. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are all big ones, but I do find that a lot of women like you know, we kind of put up with a vaginal dryness and, um, you know, the loss of libido, excuse me, the loss of libido and all that kind of things. But when you lose the ability to sleep through the night, when you used to be able to, and, and then you lose that ability or it gets worse, like even worse, that can have really bad effects. 
Yeah, absolutely. And then less lesser common, but if you do move towards the earth element when you come into the stage of life, then that heavy sort of moist and dense qualities will be in excess where you'll have the weight gain and you'll start maybe having that lymphatic congestion. And then the, the mood is more like sad or unmotivated or feeling bogged down or not able to concentrate because of a, a slight dullness, you know? So these are sort of the three categories that, that kind of manifest just more intensely at this time when we're, we're finishing that fire part of the life and moving in towards the air part of life. But we do have so many things to offer to help pacify and bring you back into balance, regardless of which one of these categories you're in. And before we get into that, I just want to really um, like hammer this home <clears throat> is that what I see and what I experience myself actually is that in today's society, women are so driven, and I don't say that as a bad thing, but it's, a, it's an observation. We are very driven to be all of the things. If you're a stay-at-home mom, you have to be a stay-at-home mom and, and then, you know, be like um, making like amazing meals for your kids and cooking really well and cleaning the house and have everything ready, blah, 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 or you're a working mom. And so you're working and working hard and, and, and then you also have to be a mother or you're not a mother and you're working and you're just striving for like being the best that you can be and achieving and achieving. And that is great when you balance it, balance the fire of ambition and achievement and goals, right? With the, um, with, so it's a yang and the yin, like in traditional Chinese, Chinese medicine, they speak about the same thing. It's like, whenever you go heavy on the yang, which is the fire, you have to also bring in the yin, which is the water, like the cooling. So that's when, and sometimes we actually treat our, um, like our um, ambition with like exercising hard. So you're like, okay, I'm going to take a break from working and being a mother. And I'm going to go hard on the Pilates, on the Peloton, on the CrossFit. And actually that's just more fire. And it might make you feel okay in the moment, but you're adding to that fire when actually what your body needs to bring back that balance is some gentle yoga, some gentle Pilates, some breath work, some walking in nature, um, disconnecting from your, um, your list of to do's and just sitting down and reading a relaxing book, you know, um, going for like an infrared sauna or a massage, or even just taking a little bit of time out for yourself in the day to just do a hobby that you really enjoy or dance, something like that. So that's where I see that women, they come into menopause, like burning hot, and it's okay until they reach a tipping point. And for some people, the tipping point can be even as early as their 20s and they start to go through hormonal, hormonal imbalances due to that even earlier. And for some women, uh, and it can be in your 30s, your 40s, and then in the menopause, perimenopause. And in some women, they can even have been okay and they're in menopause. And then all of a sudden it's like, you know, a family member gets sick um, like a parent or a, a brother or sister or whoever, or a friend gets sick. And then all of a sudden you have to work, work, you know, to help them. And if you don't bring back some balance into your life to give yourself that break from that heavy ambition and drive and, and need to like work hard, you're also going to start to go into some hormonal imbalances, even at that stage. Yeah. And a good way to kind of summarize that, that what can balance that, um, sort of ambitious stage of life and the go, go, go is play, surrender, and cooling. Those are kind of the three that I like to offer. And so as, um, as you alluded to, we're talking about taking time to do what you love. What's play for you? Like what's real play? What brings you that joy and schedule that in? Cause you're a scheduler, you know, like if you're doing all of these things, you've got a schedule and play again is not that hard, hard exercise. It's actually something that's going to make you laugh and giggle and be silly and, and just kind of let down the guard. The surrender has a lot to do with like wanting everything to be like, um, perfect or like at a certain level of like expectation because deep down you know we we try our best to be like this because we want to be loved and so we're wanting that softness you know all of this hardness is because we want the softness and and 
So being able to surrender, even with your yoga practices, you're like forward folding, even like letting go of maybe an outcome, those kinds of things can help surrender. And then for sure, opposites, you know, balance, right? So hot, 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 cool, cool, cool. So we're going to start adding those cooling exercises like, you know, moon bathing and yin yoga and um, some of the things that Patricia was saying, like we want to just like have those more cooling foods. We're looking at um, bitter and astringent and sweet foods, you know, that we can bring in cucumber water, like all of these ways to just kind of like cool down the body and just take rest, especially um, during the times of our cycle when things can be a little bit hotter too as well. Yeah. And I mean, it, what I found really interesting um, that I learned doing our workshop together, the East meets West was that sometimes you have to bring in the coolness, but sometimes you have to take away the heat. Like for me, my itis is my inflammation or my eyes were from foods that were really aggravating my fire. And so I had to take away like, you know, caffeine for me was that cacao, um, too much tomato is like very burning hot, um, too much sour ferment, like, uh, sorry, too many fermented foods. It was like kind of um, too much of it, you know, I was, I was like overdoing those things. So sometimes you do have to bring it down. And one thing is that I do think that in the past, um, the tendency was for women to go into dryness and, and you would see like, um, you know, you would get like old and dry and wrinkly. I do see that we are getting more of that heaviness. Um, so people are, get, are, are getting into menopause and they're actually getting like heavier and thicker. So whether you're skinny or overweight, um, it doesn't matter. Actually, the weight doesn't matter. It's um, how is it, how are you feeling in your body? You can be quite slim and unhealthy and you can be um, larger set and quite healthy, but it's more like, how are you feeling? So I've seen a lot of women that seeing more women in that kind of heavier, swollen, bloated, like that difficulty with the weight loss. And, um, and that's something that you want to, you know, take that then you might not if that's your primary issue, because you can have both, right, you can have some drying in some parts, like you can have the osteoporosis and the constipation, but then you can have the um, heaviness with the weight gain and the swelling. And so sometimes that means you have to be even more careful. Um, and how we often get into the hormonal imbalances of the weight gain is through that sweetness, like too much of that sweetness. Um, too much of the denseness. So those are your like breads, your, your heavy flours, you know, um, your pastries and your cookies and your donuts. And all of those things bring a lot of denseness and sweetness. And that's, how, that's one of the way to balance the hormonals. Uh, and it, you know, we might be okay with that at a certain age, but once we get into um, certain stages of our life, it might be easier to imbalance us into that dense phase uh, of our lives. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we go into this, the more that we have an opportunity to chat, we talk about these little details where if you've got the fire, you're, like you said, you're reducing the pungent and the salty and the sour, and you're increasing the, the bitter and the astringent. But when we're on the earth side of things and the weight gain might be there, then you're increasing that pungent. You know, you want to get a little bit more of the spice that like heat coming to help like, you know, burn out that excess. We want to move like one of the things that you've recommended in the past is a rebounder, which is so great for moving the lymph, especially for if you're on that, that trajectory of, of the earth element rebounder is a really great um, way to move the body. Um, warm water and lemon just helps to cleanse all of that out, right? And uh, we want to decongest like the lymph. So uh, one of the things we know in, in Ayurveda that can help decongest is anything that dyes something red. So you're like, pomegranate, your cherries, like those kinds of foods, the, the deep red foods can help like really cleanse the lymph system um, is what we, what we say in Ayurveda. So there is these like, you know, going towards the pungent and bitter and astringent foods, lowering your sweet, sour and salty, because you know, that's what's increasing um, the, the earth element and, and just trying to move the body and kind of like scrape that stuff out, right? So that was, that's what we would be doing with the earth element trajectory. 
And that's, and you find that in your vegetables and, um, and in some fruits, right? Some fruits are also too sweet, but some fruits are more of like the color, as you say, like the antioxidants, like the berries, the deep, the deep colored fruits uh, that are not super sugary. Um, whereas I think our, our society is like really heavy on the whites and the browns, like the breads and the pastas and, and, and the rices and that kind of thing. So um, I'm actually hosting a five day challenge in the new year, 2022 in January. And that's where we're gonna get into the science that supports just what you said, Natasha. I think it's so cool that Ayurveda, I didn't know that Ayurveda says that about that, about the, that color, that polyphenol, that uh, pigment of the, of the fruits, which actually have um, and vegetables, which actually have medicinal effects within the body to help bring balance back into the body, which is really cool. Yeah. And if you do end up going towards the trajectory of the dry and wrinkly and like lot weight loss and, you know, loss of sleep anxiety side, you want to do the opposite. So the opposite of dry in Ayurveda is oily. It's not wet. So yes, hydrate, of course, hydrate um, with your salt soleil and, you know, with your warm water and lemon and all of the things. But like what we, one of the things we talk about is getting oil where you need it, getting oil in the food, getting oil on the body, getting oil in the orifices, like, you know, oil enemas, you know, our abhyanga, our self oil massage, we've talked about before, check out one of our, our other um, talks on that. And what we're hoping to do more and just, you know, getting a chance to like, calm the mind and and you know going towards the the meditation or mindfulness and just easing those like mobile dry qualities that will come with that so you want to look at the opposites so it's it's like what um we've been saying like Patricia as you mentioned we're talking about balancing with opposites so like increases like and opposites start to pacify so how are you feeling you know, what are the qualities of how you feel? And is that in excess? And if so, bring in the opposite qualities with your diet, your lifestyle choices, your habits, um, and anything you can to just, you know, feel um, more at balance by, by bringing that in. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because um, just reflecting back, bringing it all together, when you said the hot flash was from heat, um, and heat comes from fire and fire and fires like stress, really, that's one way to look at fire um, physically and emotionally. Um, they've shown in, in research that hot flashes are triggered by um, the activation of your stress um, nervous system and your stress hormones. So like your adrenaline goes up and your um, cortisol hormone goes up and that imbalances your, and you're in your perimenopausal state and that will imbalance the hormones even further and you'll go through a hot flash. And that's actually originating a little bit from the brain. Like it's the brain to um, um, hormonal gland production. It's that communication. So actually in the moment, uh, what you can do to cool a hot flash is to like look within and say, what is it that's activating my fire? What is it that's got me stressed out? And what can I do? Can I, can I breathe it out? Can I take some deep breaths to breathe it out? Can I remove myself from the situation? Can I change my perspective on this? So it's no longer a fiery response, but like a cooling, calm, relaxed response. So it can even be that immediate, you know, like it doesn't have to be like, okay, it often will include like, okay, I've got to plan my food out to balance out. Like I got to add like, and by the way, the Mediterranean diet research shows that those individuals eat up to eight tablespoons of olive oil a day. So like get oily, you know, <laughs> there is nothing wrong with the right kind of oil and olive oil is the right kind of oil. So um, it's very hard to overdose on it, but, you know, just don't go over eight tablespoons because the research at least shows that that's within a good range. And we need to, we want to age like, we want to age, we don't want to um, like, you know, um, deny aging. We want to work, we want to age um, gracefully and we want to be fit. We want to be flexible mentally and physically. We want to be comfortable in our own skin. Um, you know, we, we want to feel like, you know, plump with life, you know, like not like dried out and within or like overly, you know, um, like heavy, like that feeling of heaviness. I'm not even talking about weight. But that feeling of heaviness within, we want to feel light and energized and energetic. 
And what I love about Ayurveda is that as you're going through this, sometimes you like overdo something. You're like, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to go into like, I'm going to eat so much fat. I'm going to get so oily. And then you start feeling like, you know, what would too you heavy. <laughs> too heavy. You're like, you're dense. Um, you know, you want to feel, you don't want to feel dense. You don't want to feel that. So then you dial back. You're like, okay, I overdid it on the oil. Right. And then time to go to the sauna. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that what Natasha has given is a taste. Like, obviously we can't explain everything about Ayurveda and menopause in this time, but I feel like we've given you a very, very good taste of what it means to use Ayurveda's perspective and wisdom. And so these are tools in your toolbox that you can pull in for yourself. And I, you know, I'm, um, and I forgot to introduce myself at the beginning, Dr. Patricia Mills, medical doctor, functional medicine practitioner. What I can say is that all of these tools that Natasha have talked about, we use in functional medicine. And what I love about her view of what, how she brings Ayurveda to it is um, kind of categorizing them. You know, I never thought of that, but it's true. Like there are certain tools that we use that bring down fire. There are certain tools that we use that bring down um, like heaviness, you know, and, and, or bring it up. Like sometimes you need to up the fire, right? So being able to like pull your tools from each different category and kind of use it in a beautiful, fluctuating, flexible kind of like dance um, through life. So that life becomes this like really organic, energetic experience. Um, and I just wanted to give a shout out. We have um, Ursula Hines, uh, Ursula and Anna are watching today. Hi, ladies. Um, and um, uh, Anna had said a comment that I don't want to age, don't want to grow old. For me, it's I'm not I, like my perspective. I understand what you're saying, Anna, but um, we are going to uh, chronologically age. I mean, that is a given. We're going to go from being one years old to being however old we are when we pass away. And that cannot be reversed, but we can biologically um, change our aging. So, and we know that from the research, like telomeres are like um, a little at the end of the DNA, there's like little shoe, shoestring caps kind of like that are the telomeres and we can t tell our aging by how much they've unraveled. And they've actually shown that uh, with uh, an approach to health that works for your body, it can actually um, re, uh, like create integrity in that again. And so you actually age in reverse. You can biologically age in reverse. So um, that's why you get some people who are 80 and they look like they're 50 and they behave like they're 50 and they're physically 50. And some people who are 30 and they look and behave and feel like they're 50 or 60 or even 80 sometimes. So we're not talking about reversing a chronological age because that's impossible. But what we can do is we can reverse biological age and ensure that no matter what stage of life we're in, we're feeling our optimal self. We're looking our optimal self. We're experiencing the optimal life that we can experience um and we're and but and even at a higher level we have the right perspective on life that, that brings us what we ultimately all crave which is happiness and i think it's really hard to be happy if you feel like your body is simply not happy with what you're doing for it and what you're giving it um and it will tell you <laughs> you know your body will say listen there's too much of this going on. Here's the signs of that. This is the body language. And what Natasha is talking about is how to read the body language and how to take that body language and, and, and then pull from your tools to decide what am I going to do to um, create a body language of health? Yeah, I love that. And, and you know, imagine a, a, a time of like going into these old, older years with ease, like oily and filled with love and balanced. And then you're at a time where there's not as much pressure from the world to get things done. You're still feeling good. And then you're at that point where you're like, I really want to you know, start to share my knowledge. Cause when we get into that stage of life, that's when we really innately want to share our wisdom and pass the wisdom on. And when you're in that stage and you're feeling like really alive and filled with love and, and love is one of those things that actually help that integrity, you know, that, that the love, um, the love languages, I was just watching a podcast on that and how that has a, an actual effect you know, um, on our aging process. 
uh, it's just amazing. So, you know, picture that instead, let's picture like an abundant, beautiful, oily, uh, you know, time where we have less stress and more ability to share and meditate and do our, our self like study. Oh, I love that, Natasha, because sometimes people are like, well, what do I replace the ambition with and the drive with? And it's like, it's not so much that you need to lose ambition and drive. It's like, how, but how, what are you bringing to that to create that balance so you can actually really enjoy it? Because a lot of us are in ambition and drive mode and not enjoying it, or we're enjoying it, but we're paying the price with our body, which means that ultimately we're not going to enjoy it as much as we should, right? So we need to be able to have the balance in all things. So Natasha, um, thank you so much. I always learn so much with you. And um, where can people find you if they want to reach out um, and see what your services are and what you offer? Yeah, thanks so much, Patricia. I've had so much fun as well. Always love doing these things with you. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Natasha S Yoga. I have I'm on Facebook. I have a website, Nourish Yourself First. And uh, yeah, I've got lots of fun things coming up, weekly yoga classes, some, you know, webinars, and you're going to see Patricia and I working together as well this upcoming year. So keep your eyes out for that. And if you missed our East meets West, we've got some more surprises for you later this year. Awesome. I'm so, so stoked for our continuing collaboration. And for those of you who watch today, thank you so much for your participation and being present. And for those of you who are watching this at a later time, thank you as well. We are um, so grateful to have this opportunity to share our knowledge with you. We continue to learn. It's an evolving process. It never ends. We stay humble within that knowledge and so energized and excited by it. And so I uh, hope you all are having a wonderful um, time. And, um, you know, if you're catching this now, it's 2021, we're heading into 2022. This is the year, make this, make this the year of your health, right? I mean, every year should be the year of your health, but since we're in this time right now, let's set an intention that we are gonna upgrade your, our, our health together. And that includes um, happiness, as Natasha mentioned, when we are mentally well, we're happy and in loving, uh, loving everything, all others and ourselves, we create health within us as well. It's all interconnected. They cannot be separated, health and happiness. Um, and we are here for you to help you in that process. So I wish you all well into the new year. Bye. Bye, Natasha. Thank you so much.